Coach Scott, what are your thoughts about this year's schedule as you enter your fourth year as the head basketball coach at the University of Denver? Well, I mean, it's a very competitive schedule, I think. I think the schedule sort of mirrors the, the progress of the program over the first three years uh, as, we've, as we've continued to improve. Uh, I think the level of our schedule has improved. Uh, you know, an important thing uh, that we continue to do is, you know, we have 15 home games, which uh, we've said since we've been here, playing at home and being good at home and winning at home is, is critical. Uh, so we have another good home schedule. Uh, along with that, we, we put on there some teams, uh, when you look at the schedule, 10 games against postseason teams from a year ago, uh, five games against NCAA postseason teams. So that sort of proves uh, what I'm saying about the schedule. Uh, being very competitive. A lot of times, you know, it's sort of like recruiting. Everybody says they have a good recruiting year. Everybody says they have a hard schedule. You know, we, we have the things that back up uh, the facts that say we, we've upgraded our schedule uh, by the fact that we're playing all these teams uh, that were in the postseason last year. And uh, it's going to be difficult for us, but that's the challenge uh, that our guys need to continue the progress we've made in our program. Okay. Speaking of home, uh, the Pioneers have the Ninth longest current home winning streak in the NCAA at 15 games, and your Pioneers are 36 and 7 at home the past three seasons. How do the Pioneers continue um, that trend with uh, with a tough schedule with uh, quality home games against Utah State, Colorado State, Portland, as well as the SBC schedule? Well, that's uh, you know, no matter who you play at home, you have to be you have to be good. You have to be able to win your home games in college basketball. So. You know, the way I look at that is, is it doesn't matter who we have at home. Uh, we, we have to continue to do, you know, what you alluded to, uh, 36 and 7, 27 and 4 over the last two years at home, uh, 15 and 1 last year. So uh, obviously we've been able to uh, put that, you know, in cement sort of here three years in that, hey, we're going to be good at home and we're going to test that this year with the likes of what you said, Utah State. Uh, Colorado State's going to be better. That's going to be our home opener. Uh, that's going to be a very tough game, uh, but again, we need a, a tough schedule. We, we need to play those kinds of games, and we also need to have those games on the road, and going to Southern Mississippi is going to be very good. Uh, it, it's going to help us uh, in the long run, and it all comes down to, you know, your non-conference schedule in college basketball is designed to gear yourself and be ready for your conference league. You know, college basketball is about conference play. It's about being ready for conference play. It's about being good in your conference. Uh, it's about winning cha championships in your conference. Uh, we've made progress in three years to get ourselves to the point where we're going to find out this year how much progress we're going to make towards that ultimate goal. And uh, I think we have the schedule to, to challenge us the right way. Okay. It appears that the Sunbelt Conference may be better top to bottom than it has in the past several years. And a lot of teams uh, appear to arise in the west side of the division. What can you tell us about the SBC this season? Well, what I know is... Uh, what you just said is it's going to be better top to bottom. I mean, over the last couple of years, the conference has gotten better uh, from a coaching standpoint. I mean, you know, the new coach at Louisiana Lafayette, Bob Marlin. I mean, uh, in our league, I think there's at least eight coaches, nine coaches that have led programs to the NCAA tournament. Uh, that says volumes about the, the league uh, going in the right direction. And, and I know that tons of teams have players back, you know, North Texas, everybody back. I was at our league meetings in May, and all everybody said was how everybody's going to be so much better this year. You know, top to bottom, everybody's going to be going to be better. So, uh, you know, North Texas are the, the reigning champion. They return four or five starters. They're going to be very good. Uh, you know, Western Kentucky's always going to be said, uh, you know, to be good until it, somebody goes out there and beats them. Uh, they're going to be at the top of the league. So, uh, you know, Arkansas State was. It's still going to be good, but they had a key loss with uh, you know the rookie of the year, the freshman of the year, transferring out of their place. But uh, again, I think you alluded to it. Uh, the West, you know, definitely has improved uh, over the last two years. And to be honest with you, some people next year might be saying our half, the West division, is the stronger half uh, in Sun Belt play. And you know, like always, I'd like to think that has something to do with us and the progress we've made because there's no doubt that with four or five starters back, people are going to be saying those things about us. But the way we look at it is, I don't really care what they say about us. Our guys know what our challenge is. They know that we have to improve. Uh, they know what we did last year. They know we have to be better than that. And it's all about us continuing to improve 
and improve and improve individually, team-wise, offensively, defensively. If we can improve, uh, then we'll have a better year this year. Okay. Um, is this the year that the Pioneers can improve their play on the road? Well, I mean, I've been through this before. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, I stressed when we got here being good at home. You, you, you can't be good at everything right away when you take over a program. Sometimes I think that's the mistake uh, that you can get caught up in and make that mistake. You know, we, we, you have to define some things that you want to click off every single year. You know, and I know in our three years being good at home, uh, getting better offensively, taking care of the basketball, getting better defensively. Uh, we've done those things, and you know, this year coming up, it's obviously that challenge for us. Can we have to be better on, on the road? We we've grown up. We have older guys now. Uh, the first couple of years, you know, we're trying to win on the road with young guys in college basketball. It's difficult. I think all the pieces are sort of in place there now. Older guys, guys that have played a lot of minutes, and most importantly, guys that have played a lot of minutes that are older that have won basketball games. We won 19 games. That means you're. You know, you're getting to be a good basketball team. Now the final piece is now we got to go on the road and we got to keep being good at what we've had as our staples. And now we have to add to that. We're going to go win some games on the road. This late August, uh, the Pioneers are going to embark on a trip overseas to Spain and play some international competition. What can you tell us about the trip and how that will uh, benefit leading into the 2010-11 season? Well, obviously, I mean, the trip, you know, we have four starters back. We have everybody back except for Nate. So the, the big part of this trip is uh, continuing uh, to add on to the experience that we have with Chase Hallam and Brian Stafford uh, and, and Rob Lewis and Andrew Hooper uh, and all our returners. Uh, you know, another piece to this puzzle is, is we're adding uh, a new piece to the puzzle uh, with Trevor Noonan coming in. Uh, that's going to, you know, give me the ability and us the ability maybe to move Justin Coughlin to a different position. And just as important there is with Nate leaving, we're going to be giving the ball to Chase Hallam and Brian Stafford and saying, here, you guys got to run the team. It's your team now. You have the ball all the time. So those are some different pieces to add into the puzzle, and those are some different roles for guys to play. Uh, we're going to go to Spain. We're going to practice for 10 days before we go. Then we're going to play six games over there against top flight competition. And hopefully what that's going to do for us is continue to add that to that experience we have, but also give us the answers to these questions that I think I have the answers to. I just said it to you, but you don't know that. Uh, we're going to start on October 15th, and we're going to know if my thoughts about how we're going to replace Nate Ronner uh, are right. And, uh, you know, a trip like this gives you those answers uh, in advance. It gives you that experience. It also gives the guys an unbelievable uh, time to be together, to experience something that you, you don't have that opportunity to go do that in your life, and, and to do it with your friends, and to do it with people you like, and to do it with your teammates. And I'm hopeful that all those things put together, uh, you're going to make the trip be a big benefit to us. And, you know, in the past it has been at different places I've been, and, and I'm hopeful that we sort of get the same result here. Okay. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right. Thank you. All right.